Good morning, colleagues and boys. Well, it's my turn to share in the uh, morning assembly. I wonder what would be the appropriate topic to be shared with you. So, throughout my teaching career, there are lots of grumbles and vines. So, I prefer to choose this topic, grumble and vine. And since these are really annoying, so I will try my very best to finish it quickly. Well, in attending some of the old boys' gathering, the following comments has been come across very often in their sharing about their school life in DBS. Well, lessons and teachers are useless, and there had, been, had not been much for me to learn about. Well, that's an embarrassing moment to me, being a teacher as well as an administrator of the school, to face this kind of comment. And that's the reason why I'll try to find out the reason behind, and I begin with an evaluation of the role of a teacher. What have we done to the boys? Why they provide such a comment? Well, I searched, I found some information from the internet, and uh, the following is a video summarized the speech of Lily Garcia, the National Education Association President of USA. She described to us the role of a teacher vividly. So let us go through the first video. What is a teacher? diversify our curriculum and instruction to meet the personal and individual needs of all of our students, the blind, the hearing impaired, the physically challenged, the gifted and talented, the chronically targeted, and the medically annoying. We make sure that they've had their immunizations, make sure they understand disease control, teach them to resist drugs, alcohol, tobacco. We give career counseling, pregnancy counseling, mental health counseling. We get them on the bus safely. We take them off the bus safely. We provide computer instruction, sex education. We stop bullying, teach them to say, I'm sorry, and mean it. We instill an understanding of civil rights, the political process, challenge racism, foster social tolerance, and appreciation for our cultural and religious diversity. We teach the principles of free enterprise, how to be a good sport. We develop personal responsibility, practice bicycle safety, and check for head lice. We provide bilingual education, teach metrics, how to be a wise consumer, exercise weight control, how to drive a car. We teach the impact of wars, develop collaborative skills, how to tune a violin, how to use reason and evidence to predict the future. We teach them to revere their environment, how to manage their money, how to access information, how to make wise choices, how to balance a checkbook. We teach loyalty to the ideals of a democracy. We build patriotism, good oral hygiene, and respect for the worth and dignity of every individual. We nurture curiosity, encourage a good question, build self-esteem, and then we teach reading, writing, and arithmetic. Wow. What a diversified role that a teacher have to play, has to play. Well, you can judge through the reaction under the stage. And this is an usual American way of expression, quantifying everything, making it easy to be understood. According to Ms. Garcia, a teacher is a surface person then, carrying every bit of details of students. But is surface is equivalent to personal surface? Is it simply doing all the work that our maid in our family do? To me, to be a teacher, there must be something extra. Rather, I believe that nurturing the young, building up their development, 
and to help the society as a whole to build up a mind bank. Well, let us try to have a look at the traditional Chinese way of expressing the role of a teacher. A teacher should disseminate the doctrine of Confucius, well, supposed to be outdated, impart professional knowledge and resolve questions and doubt. So, there are three roles of teacher. For the first role, no longer valid today, but the second and the third role still hold truth. But in what way we can impart our professional knowledge and to help to resolve the questions and doubt? Is it directly transmitting information or to facilitate active learning by students who seek out solutions for themselves ultimately? Which one would be the appropriate one? Now this time I borrow the expression from another person, two very famous person, Japanese. The first one, the first one is Hitano Takashi. Uh, Takashi is very famous for, he, act, he is a very famous actor as well as a director and most of the people know him because he performed, he performed in, uh, in a movie, The uh, Blind Swatman, The Japanese Blind Swatman. And the other one is Mizuo Ogawa. Mizuo Ogawa is being considered to be the treasure of Japan. He is the best carpenter to perform and to prepare every traditional temple of Japan. And in Nara and Kyoto, he performed a lot of this work. Now, in an NHK documentary, Takashi, Takashi and Ogawa share how their teachers, how their teachers groom them. Let us refer to the second video. And although Takeshi and Mitsuo now have apprentices of their own, they still revere their late teachers. For the next year, you will have no newspapers, he told me, no TV, no radio. All you will do is hone the blades of your tools. That's where it all began. And so I hone my tools, day after day after day. Only recently have I come to understand the significance of doing that. And it's this. A blade that cuts well never lies. That's what I came to understand. I don't think my teacher ever directly taught me anything either just gave me a sense of things. He said, it's not about being laughed at, it's about making people laugh. Even though we're in the business of being laughed at, he told me being laughed at is the most humiliating thing. I wondered what he meant, and he said, it's about making them laugh, you idiot. You don't want to be laughed at out on the street. After that, he didn't tell me another thing, but sometimes I would watch him perform and felt tremendously inspired. He didn't even say to me, watch and learn. But when I actually watched him standing there, it made me feel like, that's what I want to do. And that was really my training. I love thinking about my work. I love to think about it all the time. I feel sorry for apprentices who don't love to think about it. I mean, if they're thinking about where they're going out on Sunday, that's no good. But if they enjoy spending their Sundays owning their tools, then they will have grasped the profound appeal of this work. Maybe the idea is that, although we call it our work, it's not really work, it's actually life, it's a way of life. Though people might look at it as work, it's not something that's forced on us, that we're told we have to do. It's getting up early in the morning and honing tools without a second thought, because you like doing it. 
Because you found what you want to do with your life. That's a wonderful thing. It is, isn't it? So, the teachers of Takashi as well as Ogawa actually did not teach everything for them. Rather, their teacher, instead of transmitting information, knowledge, or skill to them, provide them or no, to uh, provide them the correct solution. They only provide them a sense of thing, a sense of thing. And the rest was to allow them to explore, to realize, and to build up by their own. And this requires the passions to learn among the students. But to parents and students nowadays, lacking direct transmission or well-structured teaching is often treated as not teaching during the lesson time. Then is well-structured or program transmission can be helpful? Paradoxically, we notice that well-structured or program transmission can hardly be student-oriented when we talk about we need to be student-oriented because your well-structured program should be delivered to the large mass of public rather than individual, taking care of individual variation. Should we provide students' comprehension instruction? Is it beneficial to them? Well, to most of you, Perhaps you may not know him, Buckham, a very, very famous footballer of the 90s as well as the beginning of the 21st century, the non-frying Dutchman. It is because his work that helped the gunner, the gunner to gain all the prize during the 90s and the early 21st century. Well, in his book, Stillness and Speed, he talked about, or he provides some truth for us. He said, if I look at my coaches in the youth at Ajax, with all due respect, there were two elderly men who had stand at the side of the pitch shouting a few things. So in a way, you create your own career, you create your own development, and that helps and later on, ah, it conforms with the expression from Takashi and Ogawa. In another word, you have to find it out by your own. Teachers can only provide you the guides, provide you the environment, showing you the, di the correct direction instead of providing you everything. He expressed further. Nowadays, players nowadays, they know exactly what to do because their coach provides everything to them. What kind of exercise they have to do with the kids. And in a way, they don't have to think for themselves anymore. They don't have to think themselves anymore. Is it true among you? It is all done for them. It is all done for them. This is a problem. Because they don't think of themselves. If they get a new situation, well, the situation not prepared by your teacher, they look to someone as if to say, what do I have to do now? Is it familiar to you? Do you notice that this situation is quite familiar to you now? I believe that this is overcoaching. So, Buckham did give us some clue. Perhaps, I can cite another example, the Valiant Scandal. Well, Valiant, the Valiant Scandal is a very, very important issue in America. Uh, if it is not because this is the year of election, uh, Valiant Scandal should be on the headline of all newspaper. Well, Valiant, I have to introduce to you what is Valiant. Valiant is, is a pharmaceutical giant in America, the largest distributors of drug. 
and also involving in a lot of research in drug production. This, his CEO devised a new business model to create a drug giant focused on distribution alone. Let someone else to do the research because research may not provide any positive economic return. So let other people do the research. We simply acquire, purchase other company and then their product would be ours. And after that, after the acquisition, in order to, in order to raise their economic benefit, they raised the price of the drug tremendously. Ah, this is their business model to earn money. Citron Research, well, uh, a stock market research company. Question, Valiant, could this be the pharmaceutical unrun? Is it any fault involved in it? Buffet and Manja criticized Valiant's business model was enormously flawed. He further, he further comment, if you're looking for a manager, you want someone who is intelligent, energetic, and moral. But if they don't have the last one, you don't want them to have the first two. So to Buffet, the most important quality of a manager is moral instead of intelligent and energetic. The best choice would be possessing all these. But if a manager can only possess the, uh, do not, uh, does not possess the third one, better not to keep it. This criticism, this criticism, definitely harmful to Valiant. And so the stock price of this company dropped from 126 US dollar per share to less than 24 dollar per share in a month's time. Because of the criticism from Berkshire, some noises bounced back from the investment bar market. If you believe that, well, this kind of uh, business model is not ethical, then why you invest in Coca-Cola? Because Berkshire is the largest shareholder of Coca-Cola company. Because Coca-Cola may do some harm to our health. So the question, if Coca-Cola is not good enough, then why you invest in Coca-Cola? And why you criticize the economic model of Valiant? Ah, and other update information, Citron Research, instead of criticizing Valiant, now, now remind their readers, ah, it's about time to buy Valiant because its share price is low enough. Well, from this event, what do we learn? What do we learn? Well, in the economic and uh, BAFS subjects, probably they can learn from the functioning, the operation of the business as a whole. And the mathematics can evaluate the effect effectiveness of the financial model. And the language subjects can learn about, through the language subject, we can learn about how we make use of ornamental words, packaging of new words, and euphemism expression, and so on. These are obvious and tangible gain, all right, through the direct input from your teacher. But how about humanity subjects? For humanity subjects, it appears to be quite difficult for them because they can hardly express anything positively, concrete, in a concrete way to the students. What they can do is to tell the story, to direct the student to find out right or wrong, to gain benefit in such a way. It involves value judgment. They can benefit from the approaches of question, how you approach an issue, different perspectives, skills, multifaceted of reality and truth, the attitude, and so on. But 
Certainly, no definite conclusion can be given by the teacher. Under such circumstances, what would be the feeling of the student? Teacher appears not to provide us a solution. We cannot benefit anything from our teacher. But what I want to express is that through learning, learning is about thinking. Through the discussion, through the learning of this event, if teachers can stimulate your thinking about it, then you have learned a lot. Teachers, not born as omniscient, they do not know everything. Well, under this circumstance, we have to admit, examine, and to explore together with students. Teaching and learning help each other. This is a Chinese proverb. Teaching is the half of learning. And after all, learning is a lifelong thing. To wrap up, I would say that teacher is not a serviceman. And teaching is not simply a personal service. If we treat teaching as a personal service, then the teacher-student relationship would, be, would become a client relationship. Do we want that our relationship would be built up as a service and client relationship? Certainly not. A teacher can facilitate students to build up to develop their judgment and decision. Judgment and decision, this is something, this is humanity. This is something that can benefit you throughout your lifetime. So do not simply pay attention to the nouns instead of adjective because nouns are always tangible, countable, touchable, easy to know. But adjective, you have to think about it. It is quite abstract. It is not easy to assess. But you have to learn a lot of adjective. Qualitative differentiation. All right? So this is really, really important. So I believe that a teacher, instead of giving you everything, if a teacher can direct you to think about it, then you can benefit a lot throughout your lifetime. And this is humanity. Well, you have the pointer, but you still have to do it by yourself. Thank you.